Hi guys, uh, today's video is uh, about uh, question number 2, May June 2023, paper 2, variant 2 and this question is about some errors which uh, errors and a few adjustments that haven't been, been recorded in uh, the ledger of Ramla. So here they are saying Ramla has calculated her da draft profit figure uh, for the year ended 28th February 2023, adjustment in Ramla's ledger accounts have still to be made for the following items. Number one, they are saying an amount of $99 owed to Ramla by Mai is to be written off as irrecoverable. So in this case, Mai is basically a trade receivable for Ramla. Trade receivable also credit customer is the person to whom we are selling goods on credit. So in this case, this person is not able to pay because they have uh, they have gone bankrupt, left the country or something uh, something of that sort and they are not able to pay to Ramla okay uh, so my basically owed Ramla in this case and uh, basically trade receivables are assets so if you need to reduce the asset so when you write off the asset you debit the irrecoverable debts account so I'll write here irrecoverable debts debit and my credit so basically irrecoverable irrecoverable debts is your expense and irrecoverable debts are always debited because when you're recording an expense you de debit the expense account you're crediting my's account because my is a trade receivable she was an asset but uh, she's not able to pay so you need to reduce the asset you need to credit my's account uh, so that is for item number one then they are saying fixtures and fittings 875 were purchased on credit from Padma so 875 fixtures and fittings when you purchase fixtures and fittings on credit you basically debit fixtures and fittings so here the rule basically apply, applies debit what comes in the business debit basically fixtures and fittings are coming in the business also they are an asset if your assets increase you need to debit the asset account you uh, you write 875 and then you've purchased this uh, on credit from Padma. So Padma is basically uh, sort of giving a loan to the business in this case. It's like an, it's like they're, they're, she's giving us a non-current asset and that too on credit. She's not uh, taking the payment right away, but we need to pay her in future, right? So um, uh, that means it's a payable. So you credit Padma. So if you have seen my uh, recording on the basic double entry, there is a basic rule of double entry, uh, debit the receiver, credit the giver. In this case, Padma is the giver of the non-current asset. So you need to credit Padma's account. Okay, number three, item number three says a loan repayment 500 had been incorrectly recorded as loan interest. So loan repayment is what? There is one thing uh, in, in cases of loans, basically loan uh, one is the principal amount the amount of the loan that we have taken so as a business if i take let's say one lakh dollar as a loan so that is my principal for example 10 percent interest is uh, is needed to be paid every year so that means i need to pay uh, 10,000 every year on 1 lakh dollar so uh, interest is basically is an expense of the business loan itself is a long-term liability when you're repaying a loan so you need to debit the loan account because your liability is decreasing and you, you need to credit the bank account but instead what we did was that we did uh, we debited the loan interest account and credited the bank account so the bank account is correctly credited but the loan interest account wasn't supposed to be debited because loan interest is not paid loan repayment is made so the basically the principal amount has been repaid so you need to credit the loan interest account because it was an expense account expenses decrease on the credit side so you just credit the expense account and you need to debit the loan uh, the loan liability loan account that is 500 so uh, that will basically uh, decrease your liability of the loan so when you repay the liability basically uh, your liability of that loan also decreases right and liabilities decrease on the debit side then they are saying rent paid 350 had been recorded as 530 so this is basically wrong amount recorded and uh, they have recorded it uh, more than what they were supposed to record so they were uh, they were supposed to record 350 they recorded 530 that means they have overstated the loan uh, the rent account uh, the rent amount by 180 so that means what they have done is they have done rent debit uh, 530 and they have done bank credit 530 what they have what they have to do to correct this is that they have to debit bank by 180 so remove that 
amount uh, by which they have overstated. So 530 minus 350 is 180. So you debit bank by 180 and you credit rent by 180. So basically you'll reverse the entry. You'll reverse the entry to, to bring the, uh, the rent amount down to 350. Um, in the next, uh, basically next adjustment, what they've done is drawings 120 had been debited to the wages account. So wages is an expense, drawings is drawings. Drawings is when the owner takes out uh, money for personal use. So in this case, drawings needed to be debited. Wages wouldn't, wages like wages, wages wouldn't be affected. So if they have uh, incorrectly debited the wages account, you need to credit the wages account in order to remove it from the wages account. You credit one 120. You debit the drawings account. You write drawings here, and you write 120 on the debit side. So this is like. 10 mark uh, for for recording all these entries in the general journal of Ramla. In the next part, they are, they are saying you need to basically show the effect of correction on the profit. So basically complete the following table by entering the amount of each, each adjustment required to calculate Ramla's, Ramla's adjusted profit. So they have already calculated a draft profit. They are expecting you to correct it basically. So then they are saying if an item has no uh, no effect on profit enter zero in the no effect or uh, no effect on profit box okay so in the first item irrecoverable debts because it's an expense uh, what you have to uh, notice here is that all the accounts that are basically uh, that basically come in the income statement are going to affect the profit so um, irrecoverable debts is going to affect the profit Fixtures and fittings is not going to affect the profit. Padma is not going to affect the profit. Mai is not going to affect the profit because Mai is a trade receivable. Trade receivables do not come in the income statement. Trade payables do not come in the income statement. Uh, the loan itself, the non-current liability loan is not going to affect the profit, but loan interest is going to affect the profit. We are reducing the expense over here. Uh, in the fourth entry, we are again reducing the expense over here. So rent is also going to affect the profit. And in the fifth entry, we are again uh, reducing the expense of wages. That is also going to affect the profit. Bank and drawings are not going to affect the profit. So we just need to record irrecoverable debts, loan interest, rent and wages. And you need to basically use a bit of your, you know, how it affects the profit. So in this case, when you are debiting rent, uh, debiting irrecoverable debts, that means you are increasing an expense, right? So if you increase an expense, your profit is going to decrease because of it. And in this case, the amount was 99. So what you will do is uh, for number one, you write 99 in the decrease in profit column. Uh, for the second entry here, that is going to affect the third basically. The second entry is not going to affect. So I will write, um, I'll write here 0 in the no effect on profit column then they are saying in the third entry they are saying loan debit loan interest credit so loan interest is basically uh, credited that means you're decreasing in expense when you decrease in expense your profit should increase okay so you write 500 in the increase in profit 500 uh, in the fourth one again you are decreasing in expense when you are decreasing in expense your profit should increase again so you um, write 180 in increase in profit and again uh, in the fifth one you are again decreasing in expense so you need to write 120 in the increase in profit uh, section so basically you will um, subtract one item that is 99 and uh, basically add three items here so your corrected profit will be um one two three five one so that is it for this this is a pretty easy you need to think a bit about uh what affects profit and how does that it affect uh, uh how does that affect profit uh whatever goes to the income statement is going to affect the profit non-current assets current assets non-current liabilities capital drawings these are not going to affect the profit directly but uh, the items of the income statement all of them are going to affect the profit then they are saying in the last part explain how the journal for item one complies with the prudence principle in the in the first item we have basically uh, written off an irrecoverable basically written off a trade receivable right 
so in this case you'll say what does the prudence principle say prudence principle says don't overstate assets don't overstate profits so you need to record this like write it properly in proper sentences so you write the prudence principle says that you are, uh, the business should not overstate their profits the business should not overstate their assets and when a trade receivable is declared bankrupt they should immediately show the show the expense once they show the expense the profit for the year is not uh, overstated then the profit for the year is true and fair accurate then uh, in the last part they are saying how the journal for item number 5 Uh, complies with the business entity principle so the business entity principle says that the owner should be treated separately the owner should be treated separately the business should be treated separately so whenever the owner is taking out money from the uh, from the business or uh, you know the owner if it if they are taking out money for the pri- uh, for their private use so they, that should not they cannot randomly just take out money from the business that should be recorded properly as drawings so owner should be treated separately uh the business should be treated separately so the business should the business is different uh, the owner is different okay so the business should be treated uh as separate uh and the owner should be treated as separate so basically if the owner takes out money from the business you should record that as drawings in the drawings account so that it's, it is shown so and drawings simply basically is going to decrease capital drawings is the opposite of capital C- capital is uh, capital is when the owner um, introduces personal funds uh, his personal funds into the business uh, that is capital um, uh, drawings is when the biz- uh, when the owner takes out money from the business for his personal use so you need to treat that as drawings and drawings will always decrease capital so that is it for this uh, question thank you so much for watching